hear C. If I'm teaching, say I hear you. It's called the prophecy. It is called the prophecy. Hmm. For the prophecy came not of all time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake, moved by the Holy Ghost. They spake, moved by the Holy Ghost. Over 40 of them. 40 men across centuries across you know years scattered some doctors some carpenters some lawyers some farmers across centuries sat down and wrote the bible and after they finished writing years after when the material was collated there were other writings that were collated but the ones that were taken out as the canon of scripture we are the ones that had one message any other writing that did not fall in line with the message the message not a message was sidelined what makes the bible scripture is the theme of the bible it is centered around the person of christ such the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life but they are they which testify of me i'm the message of the scriptures so what makes it scripture is that when you look at it the center of that message is christ so the prophecy came not of all time by the will of man but the holy men spake as they were moved by the holy ghost teaching I'm teaching okay so that will mean therefore that if we're going to examine the subject of tithing we are not just going to take tithing because we saw it in the bible we are going to have to explain it in the light of christ we will have to look at what did jesus say about tithing and then we have to look at the final the climax of revelation which is the epistles how does the epistles address the subject of titan this is very important so that we settle that matter once and for all in this church and so that you also start teaching people who are confused you start what so chapter two Another important subject which must be examined in the light of this study is the subject of tithe and tithing. It is interesting to note that the words tithes, tithing, to tithe are words that were not emphasized in the epistles. They were not emphasized in the epistles. In fact, it was only mentioned once by the writer of Hebrews. And his mention of it was not an instruction rather it was a historical emphasis and verily they that are of the sons of levi who received the office of the priesthood have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law that is of their brethren though they come out of the loins of abraham but he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of abraham and bless him that had promises and without all contradiction the less is blessed of the better and here men that die receive tithes but there he received them of whom it was witness that he liveth and as i may so say live i also who received tithes paid tithes in abraham hebrews 7 5 to 9. now that is the only reference that you will see of tithing in the epistles this above account rendered by the writer of the book of hebrews can be found in genesis 14 17 to 23 and we shall refer to it shortly in the above text the writer of the book of hebrews was not encouraging to tithe as much as he was not encouraging to offer your son just as abraham did you didn't hear that he was not encouraging to tithe just like he was not also asking you to offer your son like abraham did look at it hebrews eleven seventeen. by faith abraham when he was tried offered up isaac and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son so will you now carry your son and kill because hebrews put that abraham offered a son no you won't do that so that the book of hebrews made reference to tithe doesn't mean hebrews is asking you to pay tithe they are historical accounts with lessons to learn from 
in reality some have tried to create a doctrine out of the hebrews the hebrew singular mention of tithe they claim verse 8 means jesus receives tithe this is unscriptural and certainly not true the phrase he receives them that phrase there in hebrews chapter 7 that phrase he receives them which is where a lot of people are emphasizing was italicized this by implication will mean that it was not in the original text rather it was and was added by the translators in this case the king james translators a contextual reading will plainly show the reader that he was referring to melchizedek as symbolic hebrews 7 3 without father without mother without descent having neither beginning of days nor end of life but made like unto the son of god abided a priest continually so how was titan taught in the new testament books of the bible the words tithe or to tithe or titan were not mentioned at all in the book of acts not one mention in the pauline epistles and none in peter none in john none in james and jude's epistle too thus this pattern of his lack of mention in the new testament writing is very instructive as all the apostles taught giving but none taught the tithe or tithing they thought giving but none of them thought the tithe or tithing firstly let us examine what jesus said about the tithe let's begin from jesus our model jesus spoke about the tithe twice one was a rebuke while the other was a parable let's look at the rebuke matthew 23 23 woe unto you scribes and pharisees the word woe is a rebuke hypocrites for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law judgment mercy and faith this ought you to have done and not to leave the other undone here jesus expressly refers to the tithe as a matter of the law same as mercy judgment and faithfulness written as faith so jesus was not instructing titan here as titan preceded his incarnation they were doing tight before jesus came before he was born that is these customs were already in practice before the advent of christ so just like other practices which includes the passover pentecost and all the other ceremonial sacrifices they all preceded him who was jesus's audience here the pharisees and the scribes other mention of tithe by jesus was in a parable luke 18 11 the pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself god i thank thee that i'm not as other men are extortioners unjust adulterers or even as this publican i fast twice in the week i give tithes of all that i possess it is notable to see that the speaker in the above quoted text is a pharisee yet again thus on the two occasions where jesus mentioned the tithe he was not commending the tithe in fact if read in context verse 13 and 14 of luke he spoke about the pride of this pharisee so we have two mentions by jesus which is in rebuking and exposing the hypocrisy of the pharisees recall also one mention in the epistles which is historical and not an instruction now a fundamental rule of bible interpretation is to be silent where the bible is silent and to be loud where the bible is loud the epistles are the explanation of the old testament books of the bible hence being emphatic on tight will not be following through with the epistles concerning how giving was taught this leads us to a very important query is the non-payment of tithes robbing god is the non-payment of tithes robbing god if you have understood to this point shout a living amen Okay, let me proceed this ideology has its basis from a text of scripture in the old testament books of the bible malachi 3 6 to 10 i am the lord that change not therefore you sons of jacob are not consumed 
even from the days of your fathers you are gone away from my ordinances and i've not kept them return unto me and i will return unto you say the lord of hosts but you said wherein shall we return will a man rob god yet you have robbed me but you say wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings you are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me even this whole nation bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now here we said the lord of hosts if i will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it here malachi speaks about bringing the tithe into the storehouse observe from the law of moses in numbers 18 25 to 32 and the lord spake unto moses saying thus speak unto the levites and say unto them when you take of the children of israel the tithes which i have given you from them for your inheritance then you shall offer up an heave offering for it for the lord even a tenth part of the tithe god is telling the levite when you collect tithe from the people remove 10 percent from what you have collected from the people you levites when you remove 10 percent wave that offering before the lord so the people that were to bring the ten percent to the lord were the levites the israelites were to give the ten percent to the levites now levites were people who did nothing but attend to the tabernacle so because they didn't have business they were not employed and they were not supposed to walk they were to walk in the temple israel was asked to give them tight while they were asked to give god tight are we clear okay and this your heave offering shall be reckoned unto you as though it were the corn of the threshing floor and as the fullness of the wine press thus you shall also offer and heave offering unto the lord of all your tithes which you receive of the children of israel and you shall give the of the lord's heave offering to aaron the priest out of all your gifts you shall offer every heave offering of the lord of all the best thereof even the hallowed part thereof out of it therefore thou shalt say unto them when you have heaved the best thereof from it then it shall be counted unto the levites as the increase of the threshing floor and as the increase of the wine press and you shall eat it in every place you and your household for it is your reward for your service in the tabernacle of the congregation and you shall bear no sin by reason of it when you have heaved from it the best of it neither shall you pollute the holy things of the children of israel lest you die this is what account we read in leviticus from the above text moses instructed that the levites take a tithe from the children of israel as their inheritance they were instructed to also offer up a ten part of the tithe unto the lord as their heave offering nehemiah also spoke about the tithe in nehemiah chapter 10 verse 35 to 40 so the golden question is who then was the prophet malachi referring to in malachi 3 who was malachi referring to notice that malachi zachariah and haggai all spoke about the temple they came after nehemiah so everything they said was in the same dispensation this was when they were back from exile nehemiah 13 4 to 13 this account above in nehemiah 13 shows that they were restoring the practice of the levites and the priesthood after returning from exile because at that time the tithe was restricted to the promised land canaan now a basic fact that must be established is who was the book of malachi written to malachi 1 6 a son honoreth his father and a servant his master if then i be a father where is my honor and if i be a master where is my fear saith the lord of hosts unto you O priests that despise my name and you say wherein have we despised thy name in context the first audience were the priests this was consistent throughout the book chapter 2 of malachi verse 1 and now all ye priests this commandment is for you chapter 3 verse 3 of malachi and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver and he shall purify the sons of levi 
and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the lord an offering in righteousness so the instructions contained in the book were to the levites 